Hey there plant fans and welcome back to the Trace Cakey's channel. In this video I'm going to address two fact bombs that I dropped in my previous eucalyptus video that I said so casually you might have missed them. Remember when I said, hey, don't drink your eucalyptus essential oil, just a small capful can kill you. Did any of you stop to wonder, what? Really? How in the world does that actually work? Stores can't go around selling cyanide, yet apparently you can purchase this toxic oil and leave it out wherever, hazardously on your countertop. I thought this deadly topic needed to be addressed more before we move on to how wonderful eucalyptus essential oil is. Apparently, when it's not trying to kill you. Also, then there's the second fact bomb about the hidden powers of eucalyptus essential oil, which is that it has this tricky mechanism to help you with pain management. Hmm. I bet she didn't know that cool tidbit about eucalyptus. Most people think she's only about her scent profile. But first, back to the killing you part, because that really should be addressed. I mean, it seems like it's an important topic. I like to know what things can kill me. To explain this deadly action of eucalyptus better, I should start with the popular statement, size matters. <laughs> for many reasons, but specifically for the topic at hand. For all medicines and herbs, dose matters. Most medicines and herbs can be toxic, even fatal in the wrong doses. Take Tylenol for example. For me, its killing dose would be about 30 regular tablets at once. Two is fine, 30 is lethal. This is because my liver will start to break down the acetaminophen and Tylenol to filter it out of my body. When it does this, one of the byproducts is N-acetyl-P-benzoquinonamine. All one word. And if you think that word is nasty, the chemical itself is even worse. It's toxic. This much of that toxic molecule will cause instant liver failure. I'd be lucky to survive the night. So innocent little Tylenol can kill me when taken in the wrong dose. The point being, Tylenol is a pretty great drug. It can do a lot of things. Heck, we even give it to babies. But in the wrong dose, it can kill you. And we know that is through liver failure. The mechanism of death is liver failure. So what's happening when someone ingests eucalyptus oil? I really wanted to know what the mechanism of death was. But guess what? Even an extensive Google search couldn't agree. The only thing that Google agreed on was the fact that it could kill you. But none of the medical sites or authors or blogs bothered to say how. So I had to dig a lot deeper. One clue to its killing mechanism is that it absorbs from the stomach and into the human bloodstream almost instantly. In fact, the protocol for eucalyptus oil overdose, according to the Poison Control Center, is not to give activated charcoal or to flush the stomach. Because it's too late, the oil's already absorbed. Most hospital case studies and records from poison control documented the consequences from eucalyptus oil poisoning are they induce nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. But you can't really die from those, unless it's through dehydration, which takes time. Meanwhile, other articles said that eucalyptus oil can kill you within five minutes of ingestion. So it wouldn't be from pooping too much in five minutes. Then, I found a clue in a journal article about herbalism and eucalyptus. In that article, the herbalist cautioned using too much oil it can cause mental agitation. Hmm. So I went back to the science. What happens to the oil once it's absorbed into the bloodstream? Well, the whole molecule breaks up into individual terpenes. Terpenes would be like the chocolate chips and chocolate chip cookies. Once absorbed, the terpenes in the oil start to circulate in the bloodstream. The main terpene of eucalyptus is alpha-pinene. Alpha-pinene is just one of a few molecules that has this chemical ability to cross the iron curtain of our blood-brain barrier. Our blood-brain barrier is meant to keep out chemicals and anything that would harm our sensitive brain matter. But alpha-pinene can sneak through. When this terpene goes into our brains in low doses, it makes us feel good. It excites our brain and can alleviate chemical symptoms from depression and PTSD. But what would happen if a whole lot of alpha-pinene got into the brain? say, from drinking eucalyptus essential oil? Well, it would behave like a pinball. These molecules would start bouncing around the brain cells, activating them, exciting as many of them as they could bounce into. It would create chaos in the brain, the same way a Category 5 hurricane would bring utter confusion and destruction to a small shanty town. These molecules of alpha-pinene just keep bouncing and bouncing from one cell to the next, until all the parts of your brain are firing all at once. And, when this happens in our brain, when all the neurons are firing all at the same time, which is not normal human behavior, but instead chaotically, randomly, quickly neural behavior, this is called a grand mal seizure. Now, when humans have massive seizures, their brains literally forget to breathe. Yes, there is a very primitive part of our brain, deep in the core, that thinks about breathing. 
If that part is also in chaos, your diaphragm muscle will never get the signal to go up and down. The body is essentially holding its breath during a seizure. If the seizure goes on long enough, you will suffocate. Yikes. But wait, I have some good news. While there are some blogs and other websites that say it only takes 3.5 milliliters to kill you, it turns out it's a lot harder to die from an overdose than they make it out to be. It's very rare. I found multiple review studies that looked at accidental eucalyptus oil consumption, and there were literally hundreds and hundreds of reports of adults and children surviving accidental poisonings of much higher doses. In fact, there is one confirmed case of death that kept getting cited and referenced from one site over and over. It was actually just one elderly woman who purposefully drank 300 milliliters of eucalyptus essential oil. That's a whole can of soda full of eucalyptus oil. And yes, she died. But I don't think 3.5 milliliters is an accurate death dose. I think it would be much higher. It could be for a little baby, but it's hard to test those things because, well, that would be very unethical to expose babies to. It should, however, drive home the point that it does not take a lot of eucalyptus oil to cause someone to land in the ER and feel really awful for several days. And yes, besides the big seizure thing, it will also cause diarrhea and vomiting. So nobody wants that either. Be careful with the bottles, people. Keep them away from kids. Now, let's get into the good stuff. My natural pain relief lotion has quite a bit of eucalyptus essential oil, and it's not for the smell. As I mentioned earlier, eucalyptus is mainly used by formulators to help with scent profile. She does a great job covering up other more unpleasant scents. But I am a scientist and a formulator that practices herbalism, meaning I specifically choose plants for their therapeutic action. Remember, the main terpene in eucalyptus is alpha-pinene, which in small doses is quickly and readily absorbed by our skin, and then ushered all the way through the skin barrier and into our soft tissues. Here the alpha-pinene molecule begins to work her magic. In the body's tissues, she is a cellular mediator. Just like human mediators, alpha-pinene communicates between two upset parties. Her plant power is to speak the chemical language of cells, and most specifically, inflammatory cells. Alpha-pinene attaches to a very specific cell called interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is the announcer or the instigator of our immune system, calling in all sorts of inflammatory responses to the side of injury. Usually this is good. It helps our body recognize an injury and attend to it. But in order for the body to heal itself, it can't remain inflamed. These multiple inflammatory cells, if they become out of balance, can clog up the vessels in interstitial space, like a nasty traffic jam who isn't letting the ambulance through. It's all about balance. Thankfully, when alpha pinene is around, she goes straight to the interleukin-2 cells and gets them off their loudspeaker. She slows down the rate at which new inflammatory cells are arriving at the scene. This frees up the traffic jam and allows healing molecules to enter the injury site, much faster than they would without the use of eucalyptus. And this healing mechanism of action has been proven by science in multiple inflammatory studies. Not only does eucalyptus help calm inflammation, this action alone also allows room for my other herbal choices, included in my natural pain relieving lotion, to work their plant power relieving magic as well. I've included lavender, which dampens the strength of pain signal to the brain. I have a hemp isolate that actively reduces muscle swelling through its very own endocannabinoid system. There is also clove, a natural anesthetic, and copaiba that communicates directly with our peripheral nervous system. These are just a few of my plant power highlights for my natural pain relief lotion that of course has ample eucalyptus included. For more information on how I use herbalism when formulating my products and to learn how some of these work specifically for moderate pain relief, in my brand and others, stay tuned for my next video while I'll go over arthritis pain relieving products and which one is effectively formulated and why. As usual, don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.